A note for this video, IP stands for intellectual property. To be COPPA compliant, if you are underage, please let your guardian determine if this content is safe for you. Transitioning media from one platform to another platform is tricky business. Millennial and Gen Z members may be acutely aware of this fact if they happen to be heavily invested into the fantasy genres other than Harry Potter, namely Aragon. The book about dragons and magic had its own not insignificant following. And somewhat more recently, the global phenomenon that is the Warcraft IP. Sadly, the issue more often than not is tone deafness, lacking respect for the source material and not considering the feelings of the audience. Jake Gyllenhaal once starred as Destan in the Disney production of Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. 2010, 10 years ago, the critics considered it bland and slightly too long for a family friendly movie. Above that target time when small children start to realize they had too much soda during the commercials. Surprisingly, it's based on a game. I played it once. It's a series. I have forgotten everything about it, except that it was a platforming game similar to the various acrobatic feats performed in the game and movie plus combat. Then again, simple pleasures of seeing the good guys do something to stop the bad guys aren't necessarily all that bad. It's accessible for all audiences. Here's a cut and dry example of a $185 million idea, but sadly only returned $336 million. The problem there wasn't much of an audience to speak of. Prince of Persia, the game series, was fairly small. It stood a snowball's chance in an oven to garner more attention. Opposed with Warcraft, a game IP from Blizzard Entertainment that has touted nearly 13 million players at its peak with World of Warcraft, there's plenty of publicity for the 16-year-old massively multiplayer online game. Its problem was that it was made as if the audience understood what references were being made. The creative direction there attempted to cram decades of obscure game content dating from at least the original Warcraft Orcs and Humans released in 1994. With nothing to say of all of the content for World of Warcraft that has been released since 2007. The question, who was this made for, is often thrown around in such projects. The box office usually answers with mediocre earnings or near outright losses, such as is the case for the Warcraft movie, which only gained. 47.3 million in the domestic office while doing significantly better internationally. However, let's fast forward a bit and talk about toxic communities that have substantial influence over the creators. Oh, wait, how did that get in there? Shoot, sorry, wrong topic. Let's actually talk about this one. Netflix greenlit an original uh, license for The Witcher, originally book series by Polish author named Andrzej Sapkowski. High fantasy, the main character Geralt of Rivia is a monster hunter, which are killed witchers in this particular IP. CD Projekt Red also enjoys three entries in the video game industry for The Witcher series. Normally, diversity should be celebrated in any IP. However, this was to cause much friction. As the book is from a Polish author, the metrics are for the gaming population would not accurately predict the potential audience for the show. The loudest messages would be from the small segment of the population that had the most experience with the universe, gamers. Pictured is a screenshot of the Witcher show's take on one of the factions within the story. I will not relay the exact wording of the displeasure with the costume design, but suffice to say this was not up to viewers' standards during production of the show. However, having existing media to build off of worked in the show's favor in other places, casting Henry Cavill of Superman fame as Geralt the titular main character, was a good choice. What no one was expecting was a length that his method acting went. I would advise listen to a comparison of his voice to that of the English voice actor of the Witcher game, as the resemblance is uncanny. Moreover, it was a selling point to unite the community behind the banner of Wait and See. Let's 
Societal friction came next, with elements of the Witcher community crying foul, accusing the showrunner of being, quote-unquote, woke, and feared that her personal beliefs would have an effect on the show's production. The question then extended to, did it? As of October 8th of 2020, the official Witcher Twitter account has 323.9 thousand followers. Roses have thorns, but overall, once people got their hands on the product a year or two ago, the show was good. I'm not a huge Witcher fan. I never was personally invested into the series, but I was curious as to what the first episode held. Before I knew it, daylight was filtering in, and I realized that I had a class in about an hour as I had binged the entire series. It's an example of a book that was successfully brought to digital media twice, twice to different audiences, and was able to satisfy both. There are, of course, still detractors. However, another thing to note is that all throughout production and now leading into season two, the creators are not afraid to get feedback from the community. More importantly, they listen, they reply back. Even if it's snark veiled within professionalism like the following. Lauren S. Hisrick, showrunner for the Witcher Netflix show, Rather than firing back at a loaded question, in this instance, she is transparent about the rubric with which she hired her story writers. After posting to social media a picture of the various individuals in the team. And going along with her earlier promise to put story first, she took the high ground and gave a, quote, very serious answer to your very snarky question to this particular uh, Twitter goer. Did it work? Again, this is the 2020 Twitter page followers. It is not necessarily an in-depth capturing of what happened following its debut. However, they did something right. She and her crew followed through. Last and under the discerning lens of this essay is a fan base so toxic, so abhorrent, they have completely changed the face of cinema forever. No, not you, you're a dead horse, get out of here. Even worse, when the internet lost their collective minds over an animated marsupial. This particular adaptation is less set up because it was, from a layman's perspective, a loss in translation from source to medium. Sonic the Hedgehog is originally and always has had a distinct cartoon style to his animation. From the cameo in Wreck-It Ralph to a game released just two years ago, this has been his look. If the previous image has not burned itself into your mind yet, just wait, it gets worse. Over time, not only fans of the Sonic series, which has been around for decades, raised such an outcry, their voices reached Universal Studios and got a response. Thank you for the support and the criticism. The message is loud and clear. You aren't happy with the design and you want changes. It's going to happen. Everyone at Paramount and Sega are fully committed to making this character the best he can be. Hashtag Sonic Movie. Hashtag Gotta Fix Fast. Talk about a toxic audience forcing poor movie executives to bend to their whims. The sarcasm should be thick enough by now to realize that you probably heard about this when the Sonic movie originally came out. The surprising thing is that in taking Sonic from the game screen to the big screen, the promotional material sparked as a legitimate concern for how the potential audience felt about the project. From people glad to see what the movie makers did right by the community. While no doubt costly to the studio, they invested in something better, goodwill. Going to the critics, a person would never have gathered the same response. 
Rotten Tomatoes, for instance, rated it a below average 63%, whilst audience scores are today 93%. The fans know that the studio is willing to listen and do right by them. That was worth more to Jeff Fowler and company than releasing the movie as is. This is how repeat consumer base is made. They spent extra months to put this out. Compared to Warcraft's middling performance domestically in the United States, Sonic did much better and seemed to have been praised for breaking the video game to movie adaptation curse that has plagued Hollywood for a long, long time. Another Aragon, another Twilight, another Prince of Persia were avoided in this new day and age where the publics are able to converse with the creators of modern media entertainment. It is a give and take in the creative process that is unprecedented, however, growing fast. Companies that do not adapt to this new curve and respect their audience and their source material will reap what they sell. Let your voice be heard in the community you identify with. However, just remember that the people on either side of the aisle are just that, people too. There's common ground, the ability to wait and see, and hopefully the lines of communication between creator and audience is open. And if something is less than kind, is leveled your way, be the better person and bring good into the world regardless that everyone can enjoy. Be like Nate Yorg and Lauren Histrick who let cooler heads prevail over banana grumble muffins. Thank you for your time. May you bowl never touch your favorite universe like he did over the past 30 years. Thank you, gentle listener.